And today we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra and really going to uh, actually revisit the result. I'm not going to prove it here, but rather just uh, um, talk about why it's useful for us and what we're doing uh, presently. Okay, so let's now talk about uh, what the fundamental theorem of algebra says. So if GZ is some polynomial, then I can write it as follows, AN to the Z times Z to the N plus a n minus 1, z n minus 1, plus a n z minus 2, times z to the n minus 2, dot dot dot, all the way to z a 1, z to the first, plus a 0. And now what we have is the fundamental, the fundamental um, theorem of algebra then states that there exists some z 1 that's sitting in the complex plane, I should also note here that these coefficients here could be complex numbers, and z itself is a complex number. So there exists a z1 in the complex plane such that we can, uh, that g of z1 is equal to zero. So we can, what we're saying is we can always find a root. Okay, All right, so let's talk about, um, so that's basically what it says, but there's a few corollaries to this. One is we can always write g of z is equal to, um, once we find this root, we can write it as such, times some q of z. And I should say this theorem always works for n greater than or equal to 1. Obviously, for uh, n smaller than that, then it's, uh, it's not true, but that, that's a, a minor case. Uh, where this is going to be an n minus 1, uh, uh, order uh, polynomial. Okay, so uh, what we have here then is a pretty interesting result. Um, now, of course, we can continue this process and then do the fundamental theorem of algebra on this one to get to the final link thing that we can always factorize our, our polynomial into these binomial factors. We can find some other root of this, z2, and we can continue the process all the way till we get all roots. So what we're saying is the fundamental theorem of algebra ultimately says that um, there exists n roots. And they could be duplicate roots, they could be complex conjugate roots, all of the above. Okay, so, um, so that's a really neat result. Um, so that's the fundamental theorem of algebra, that we can always find n roots. So the question then again is, why is this important now? Okay, so let's get to that, the answer to that question. So let's recall back when we're talking about signal processing. And with signal processing, we always had, uh, uh, we had some LV, where this is some uh, linear a differentiable, differential operator. And V is, is, is some voltage. And we have some voltage input. And usually we write, this linear differential operator could be the nth order, so we have A to the N, V, nth derivative, plus A N minus one, V to the N minus one derivative, plus all the way down to uh, the first derivative times A one, plus a0 times v, and that of course is equal to vi again. All right, so with this, of course, we can do uh, Laplace transforms. Okay, and Laplace transform, we can Laplace transform this LV uh, equals vi, and we get uh, v tilde is equal to a n s to the n, plus a n minus one, s to the n minus one. Is equal to that, right? And of course we can find this transfer function then, t of s is equal to one over that, that polynomial. And I'm just gonna take that and stick it down there. Right, so this represents our transfer function that we've studied before in our homework, and it's been very important to us. Okay, so now let's talk about 
so now we can, you know, what we're going to do then is, of course, uh, rewrite this now in terms of a function of a complex variable. And then I'm going to use, you know, the fundamental theorem of algebra. We can always take that polynomial and factor it into a series of n roots. Dot, 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 all the way to z, z minus uh, n. Okay. So this is really nice, uh, and and so let's like get a, our bearings onto what this means. So if we have this t of z is equal to uh, this thing, z minus z one dot 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 all the way to z minus z n, uh, and we want to so we've already used we've already looked at this. Uh, so being able to factorize this into these binomial factors. So so why is that important? to uh, factor the denominator. Okay, and so, but now let's think about, uh, so it turns out we always want, we're really trying to study, you know, what t uh, of z uh, is doing to uh, inputs. And so one way to study that is to do uh, is to use uh, contour integration. And so I'll I'll leave for now uh, the business of what contour integration is saying about um, uh, our system, but rather let's talk about um, let's see if I let's say I use contour integration as a tool. It's a way of getting information about what t of z is doing. So if I have some contour, I'll call it, uh, uh, you know, I, wait, before I do this, I need to actually, so here's my complex plane. So I can actually, you know, draw dots for all these. So here I have a z1, and maybe it's a real valued uh, root. And then over here, maybe it's a z2. And over here, you might have uh, a complex root, we'll call that z3. But we know that there's always a complex conjugate that goes with it for any polynomial. So there's a z4. All right. And so we could keep dotting this with more and more of these. But I'll just use this as an example. Let's say I have c1, which is a, a, you know, a, a simple closed contour, a positive simple closed contour around only z1. So I'm going to do that like that. as follows. Okay, looks good. All right, so um, what we want to be able to do is actually uh, write this out. Um, we want to be able to uh, uh, try to figure out what that integral is. So I'm going to call that EI of 1, which is going to be the contour integral C1 of T of Z. So I'll leave for now what the meaning of this integral is, but actually just see, okay, let's see how we can compute such an integral. And we can actually use uh, the Cauchy integral formula to do this. So note, we have t of z. It can actually be written in the following form. We can write it as uh, 1 over z minus z1 times, and I, I can really just put it completely in the, in the numerator here. This is going to be 1 over all of our other factors, z minus z2, z minus z3, dot, 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 so on and so forth, right? All right, and now we can write our integral as follows, c1, z minus z1, and remember our closed contour is only enclosing this one z1 root. The other roots, of course, are all outside. And so what we're saying here is this numerator then This thing up here is analytic. On and in C1. Okay, in which case we can use uh, the Cauchy integral formula to actually write this as follows. This becomes, um, this becomes uh, T, oh, sorry, sorry, 
So the value of this integral becomes 2 pi i times this numerator evaluated at z1. And that's the value. We don't have any parameterization to do or anything like that, so it becomes z1 minus z2. z1 minus z3. z1 minus z4, and so on and so forth. And that computes that contour integral. So it gives us a lot of uh, uh, ease of compu computation for many integrals. So that's a good application of, uh, of the... So what we've done here is use the Cauchy integral formula and we also use these binomial factors as a nice way uh, of, uh, of uh, and that was gotten through the fundamental theorem of algebra. So that's why the fundamental theorem of algebra is important. And we'll get into later why we want to take these integrals and what they tell us. Okay. Now, of course, the next question then is, if I have a contour that now contains, now here are all my roots of the, uh, of the, of the polynomial. So that could be z1 z2, z3, z4, and z5, right? Um, so the question then is, what if I have a contour that encloses two of them? Well, the first thing we can do is actually deform this contour a bit. So we can actually um, form it like so. We can actually turn it into uh, uh, two uh, simple closed contours around uh, z3 and z1. And what we do is we put a path going to and fro and overlap those two so they cancel out. And then of course we find out that we can just perform our calculation on, on those two independently. So that's how we can do that. Um, so so again, I, I'm going to punt on what, um, what this means. Uh, but we do, know that this is, we do know that this will yield us some important information about our transfer functions. And now we have a simple, simple way of, of doing it. So uh, we'll, we'll talk later about why we'll do this. Thank you very much.